What do members of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints believe about resurrection and immortality? There are two simple facts about our lives on earth. Everyone is born, and everyone will die. There's no way around it. But is death the end of who we are? Is it the end of our identities and personalities? Mormons, more properly referred to as Latter-day Saints, members of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, believe we existed long before we came to earth. We lived as spirit children, with heavenly parents who loved us, and we loved them. They had immortal bodies of flesh and bones. An immortal body is a body that never dies. Our Heavenly Father created a plan for our spirits to come to earth. We would enter into physical, or mortal, bodies that would be subject to death. This plan is sometimes referred to as the plan of happiness, or the plan of salvation. While on this earth, we're subject to a range of physical and spiritual ups and downs, joy and pain, loss and suffering, happiness and love. When we eventually die, our spirits will be separated from our bodies and will enter into a spirit world to wait for the resurrection. The resurrection is a time when our spirits will be reunited with our bodies. Gordon B. Hinckley, a prophet of God, said, Of all the events in human history, None is so significant as the resurrection of the Son of God. Because Jesus Christ overcame death and was resurrected, everyone who's ever lived on this earth will be resurrected. That's one reason why we recognize and worship Jesus Christ as our Savior. So, what is immortality? Without the resurrection, when we die, the separation of our spirits from our bodies would be like an endless prison for us. Heavenly Father knew this would happen, so He provided a Savior to atone and be resurrected for us. Christ's resurrection frees us from the prison of death. Our bodies and spirits will be resurrected in perfect, immortal forms. Our weak, mortal bodies will be changed to glorified and perfected bodies, never to be subjected to disease, injury, or death. That's what is meant by immortality. Why is resurrection and immortality an important part of Heavenly Father's plan? There's a purpose to our lives on earth. Heavenly Father knows us individually and values our unique talents and abilities. Our birth on earth wasn't the beginning, and death isn't the end. They're stepping stones for us to change from a mortal to an immortal state. Learning about the resurrection and immortality can give us hope when life's troubles weigh us down. Hope changes the way we look at our experiences on earth. Dallin H. Oaks, an apostle of Jesus Christ, said, The assurance of the resurrection gives us the strength to endure the mortal challenges faced by each of us, such as the physical, mental, and emotional deficiencies we bring with us at birth or acquire during mortal life. Because of the resurrection, we know that these mortal deficiencies are only temporary. So, let's review. What do Latter-day Saints believe about resurrection and immortality? Because God loves all of His children, He created a plan for us to return to Him. In that plan, we would be born on earth, learn and gain experience throughout our lives, and eventually die. God sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to be resurrected so we can be resurrected too. And as we rely on Him and choose to live righteously, we can return to live with our heavenly parents in perfected, immortal bodies. Now you know. What do members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints mean when they talk about salvation or exaltation? Are they the same, or is it something more? Mormons, properly referred to as Latter-day Saints, members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, believe in both salvation and exaltation. To understand more, let's turn to the Bible. In the book of John, Jesus discussed heaven and the great variety of blessings awaiting the dead using the metaphor of a mansion. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, there ye may be also. 
He continued, No man cometh unto the Father but by me. God loves all of his children and wants all of them to return to live with him. And Jesus Christ is the way. Salvation and exaltation are only available because of Jesus Christ. But let's talk about salvation first. When Adam and Eve partook of the fruit in the Garden of Eden, they experienced two consequences. First, they became mortal, and from that moment on were subject to death. The other consequence was they were cast out of the garden and separated from God, something Latter-day Saints call spiritual death. Latter-day Saints believe both of these conditions, physical death, separation of one's body and spirit, and spiritual death, separation from God, can be overcome because of Jesus Christ. Let's talk about overcoming physical death first. Three days after Jesus Christ was crucified and died on the cross, he was resurrected. His spirit reunited with his resurrected body. Latter-day Saints believe he lives immortally with a body of flesh and bone. He was the first to overcome physical death, and according to God's plan, all of his children will also be resurrected. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. So, does that mean everybody gets the reward of resurrection? Yes. In the book of Acts, it says, There shall be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and unjust. All of God's children will be resurrected. Their spirits and bodies will be reunited forever. They will all have immortality. Now let's turn toward the subject of spiritual death, or separation from God caused by Adam and Eve's transgression. God's children also suffer separation from God as a result of disobedience to His commandments. All of God's children can overcome separation from God through the atonement of Jesus Christ and living the teachings of His gospel. The degree to which one is obedient in this life will result in the place or mansion in heaven of which Jesus spoke. Again, the Bible teaches, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Latter-day Saints believe there are many rewards, levels, or mansions in heaven to which God's children may attain. And according to their faith and progression in becoming like the Savior Jesus Christ, both in this life as well as in the post-mortal life to come, each one of God's children will be blessed with a corresponding reward in heaven. Only a relatively few, referred to by Latter-day Saints as sons of perdition, will receive no reward in heaven. Save those few, all of God's children who have ever lived will receive some reward, some degree of salvation. The Lord has referred to these degrees of heaven as kingdoms, more specifically, the celestial kingdom, the terrestrial kingdom, and the telestial kingdom. The Apostle Paul referred to the glory of these kingdoms in the New Testament when he described, There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. As each heavenly body differs in brilliance, each of the degrees of glory also differs in reward. And this is where exaltation comes in. Latter-day Saints believe exaltation is to receive the blessings of the highest degree of heaven within the celestial kingdom, where God the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ, reside, The scriptures refer to this reward as eternal life. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. To know God and Jesus Christ means to develop a relationship with them through worship, devotion, and keeping the commandments. In short, it means to follow Jesus when he invites his disciples to come follow me. Latter-day Saints believe God's work and glory is to bring about the immortality and eternal life of all of His children. They also believe that God wants His children to have everything He has, to become everything He is. This is what the Apostle Paul meant when he wrote about being heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Through His atoning sacrifice, death, and resurrection, Jesus Christ conquered physical and spiritual death. And as a result, All of God's children will be resurrected, with a body and spirit united in immortality. All will have the opportunity to permanently overcome spiritual death, separation from God, by following the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's all part of God's plan. And yes, it's true, there are many details of the afterlife that simply haven't yet been revealed. Nevertheless, God asks that His children focus on becoming like Jesus Christ in this life. 
As they strive to do so, God makes not only spiritual salvation, but exaltation possible for his children, to dwell where he dwells, to live as he lives eternally. Latter-day Saints and what they believe about salvation and exaltation. Now you know. Inasmuch as this people draw near to me with their lips, but have removed their hearts far from me, I will proceed to do a marvelous work, even a marvelous work and a wonder. vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. I went to the city of New York and presented the characters which had been translated with the translation thereof to Professor Anthon. Gave me a certificate attesting that they were true characters, and the translation was correct. Where did your friend get the record? It was delivered to him by an angel of God. Hmm. May I see that certificate? Of course, Doctor. There are no such things as visions or angels. You tell your young friend to bring the record to me. I'll translate it for him. The plates are sealed. I am forbidden to bring them. I cannot read a sealed book. It is not the work of God that is frustrated, but the work of men. Pray unto the Father. I was one who was not learned, but the Lord provided the way. Thus the prophecy of Isaiah was fulfilled. The record was translated through the gift and power and mercy of God, and not the wisdom of man. It was published as the Book of Mormon. I told the brethren that the Book of Mormon is the most correct of any book on earth and the keystone of our religion. It is just what Isaiah saw a marvelous work and a wonder. Well, Mr. Smith, is it acceptable to you? Yes. Yes, this will do. I will proceed to do a marvelous work, even a marvelous work and a wonder. President Kimball had a great concern for the Native Americans throughout his life. When he received his patriarchal blessing at the age of eight, he was told, 
you will preach the gospel to many people, but more especially to the Lamanites. Shortly after George Albert Smith became president of the church in 1945, he called Elder Kimball to be responsible for all church relations with Native Americans. One of Spencer Kimball's most important services to Native Americans was the establishment of the Indian Placement Program, which became an official church program in 1954. This program provided thousands of young Native Americans the opportunity to receive a formal education as they lived as foster children with participating families. Of his beloved Lamanite brothers and sisters, President Kimball taught, assuming that we do our duty to them, the Indians and other sons of Lehi will yet rise in power and strength. The Lord will remember his covenant to them. They will come to a knowledge of their fathers and to a perfect knowledge of their Redeemer, Jesus Christ. They shall prosper in the land and will, with our help, build up a holy city, even the new Jerusalem, unto their God. It's crazy growing up in New York City, being 14. I mean, being a teenager in the middle of one of the craziest cities in the world and being LDS. You are literally one in a million. Making the decision when you're young to not use bad language, to stay moral, to be a good youth just makes all the difference in the world. I've had teachers at school in the past question me and say things about my religion. And to that, it's just awesome to be able to share what I believe, and it just strengthens my testimony even further. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. To me, coming out to Christ is giving yourself up, doing everything you can possible to be like him. If you see a group of friends that are no, not doing things that the church will approve of, you have to like reach down inside and just say, no, I can't do this, and go off, do something else. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. When I prayed about it, and I say, God, if, if there is a God, just um, tell me if these things are true. I want to know. I don't want to like rely on my parents' um, testimony. I want to know about myself. And I'm going to tell you the truth. I didn't receive a, like, an answer for that prayer that day. It was like, like the day after that I just felt this like peace inside me. I know that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Blessed art thou, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. People will see that you're just like bright and happy and they will see something good in you and they don't know what, and you can have missionary experiences. So it's all, it's all about God, right? It is about God. Yeah, that's cool. There's things that happened in my life that made me feel like I felt abandoned, and that, and that really, he helped me come back. He helped me understand that people do understand. Come unto me. For ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. When I come unto Christ, I feel so much peace and comfort. It, it makes me feel um, as if I'm home. The Savior is someone that I look up to, someone I want to be with at the end. My school was having an event at um, Six Flags and it was a music festival where I would be performing. But in order to go, I would have to um, pay up $100. So I had to work for my money, work outside, babysitting, many things. 
and then two weeks after I had paid in my money, I found out the youth conference was going to be right on the same day. It was either lose this money or lose the opportunity to attend church activity. This is why the scripture is really important because there's many things trying to have us stay away from the Lord, but we can be like Christ. He's our example and this is what we should follow. After praying for about three nights, I knew the answer. I knew that I had to attend youth conference because that's where the Lord wanted me to be. And it actually turned out to be an amazing experience. Years from now, I'm going to know that if I look back, I'll always know that if I pick the Lord and the Savior, everything's going to just work out. We should all live from His example. Hurry up, will you? Professor's going nuts down there. What's this all about? Only the biggest discovery's whole career. Will you come on? Mark! What did he find? Mark! Come on over here and take a look at this. This is amazing. Oh, that's Greek. Can you read it? Apocalypse. Exactly. Anyone know what that means? Yeah, yeah it, it means, means the world's coming to some horrible end. Earthquake, fire. Or maybe in the movies. But to the ancient Greeks, apocalypse meant to reveal or uncover. In fact, the French and the Italians and the Spanish named the last book of their New Testament, Apocalypse. In English, we have another name for it. You mean the book of Revelation? Precisely. And that's what brings us to this room. I am convinced that this room is a graphic reproduction of the book of Revelation, or Apocalypse. Why would someone do that? As an illustration? Perhaps whoever built this room wanted to visually symbolize a journey through the book, maybe as a way to understand it better. I read that book. If the title means to uncover, reveal, why is it so hard to understand? If you want to understand the mysteries, you have to have the right tools. I brought a whole bag full. Tools such as asking the right question. Well, what about the right answers? Patience is also helpful. Not to mention, a little hard work. Look over here at this design. It's one big scroll with different parts or sections. I counted seven to be exact. The book of Revelation talks about a book that was sealed shut with seven seals. If it was sealed, who opened this? Yeah, and how were they sealed? What are in these sections anyway? Mark, open that Bible I asked you to bring in, to the book of Revelation. I think we'll need it to uncover this room. You asked three questions. First, who is able to open the seals? Second, what does each of the seals represent? And third, what does each of the sealed sections contain? This is when the real uncovering begins. The Bible and the Book of Mormon are both witnesses of Jesus Christ. They teach that He is the Son of God, that He lived an exemplary life, that He atoned for all mankind, that He died upon the cross and rose again as the resurrected Lord. They teach that He is the Savior of the world. Scriptural witnesses authenticate each other. This concept was explained long ago when a prophet wrote that the Book of Mormon was written for the intent that ye may believe the Bible. And if ye believe the Bible, 
you will believe the Book of Mormon also. Each book refers to the other. Each book stands as evidence that God lives and speaks to His children by revelation to His prophets. Love for the Book of Mormon expands one's love for the Bible and vice versa. Needs to be improved this morning. I will offer a few remarks to the congregation. It yields solid satisfaction to hear men testify of the truth of the gospel. I would rather hear men tell their experience and testify that Joseph was a prophet of the Lord and that the Book of Mormon, the Bible, and other revelations of God are true and that they know it by the gift and power of God than hear any other kind of preaching. What is it that convinces man? It is the influence of the Almighty, enlightening the mind, giving instruction to the understanding. Which priesthood was restored through his prophet, Joseph, and without which no organization, no matter how well-intentioned, can operate without the sanction of deity. The Book of Mormon and Bible testify as to its veracity. Brother Eliezer, will you share your testimony with these good people? Much has been said today about the Book of Mormon. I can't tell you what to think or what to believe, but I can tell you what I believe. That is, I know, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I know that the Book of Mormon is true. When I saw a man without eloquence or talent for public speaking, the Holy Ghost proceeding from that individual illuminated my understanding. My own judgments, natural endowments, and education bowed to this simple but mighty testimony. His testimony filled my system with my soul with joy.